Hey guys, um, this is Holland Chambers Biology coming to you with um, your lab that's known as the Teddy Graham Lab. Now keep in mind because we are doing distant learning, um, not all of us have Teddy Grahams at home. So um, just kind of use what you what you have. Um, I'm actually going to be using a bag of peanuts. Um, I've taken some peanuts and I've labeled some of them with a marker with a little happy face and I've labeled other ones with a sad face, okay? So if you guys happen to have Teddy Grahams, um, Teddy Grahams that have their arms up are happy. Teddy Grahams that have their arms down are gonna be sad, okay? So you wanna be able to have a duality of happy, sad, okay? So whatever it is that you guys choose, whether it's gummy bears or cookies, um, just have one that's happy, one that's sad, but it's the same species, okay? So. <clears throat> Today what we're going to be looking at is um, what is known as the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, okay? Now, within your Teddy Graham population, we are the predator, okay? So I am eating my peanuts, which are my Teddy Grahams, and as a predator, my prey is going to have to evolve or adapt in correlation to this predator-prey relationship. And this is actually what's known as the evolutionary arms race. So either me as a predator, I'm going to have to either get stronger or faster if my little prey, my little peanuts decide to you know, run away really fast, or if I as a predator am too strong, too bold, then my little peanuts are going to have to become maybe uh, more spiky, or maybe they're going to have to bury themselves farther into the dirt. They're going to have to do something either through a mutation or through an adaptation. So again, a behavioral adaptation that will allow for them to escape me, the predator. Okay, so here's what you guys are gonna do. You're gonna grab 10 of your items. Okay, so I'm gonna grab 10 of my peanuts. Just grab a handful, put all your happy and sad peanuts in a bowl, grab 10. This is gonna be our original population. So here's my original population. I, as a predator, am going to eat three. Okay, so I'm gonna eat three of my only happy. Now here's the deal. We as predators only like the happy peanuts. Again, here's my little happy peanut. Um, the reason for that is because happy peanuts are sweet. Whereas the sad peanuts, these guys over here are bitter. Now I'll eat it if I have to, but I really don't want to. Okay, so you're going to start off with 10. You're going to reach in and you're going to randomly, now here's the key, I'm just randomly grabbing three, okay? Now, these happen to be three happy, awesome. So I'm gonna write on my data table, which you guys have on the second page. So here's your lab that you guys are gonna be working with, okay? <clears throat> on the second page, you're going to note how many happy bears do you guys have in your entire population how many sad bears do you guys have and then I want you guys to eat three happy bears okay so just again grab them out of the bucket um, once you guys eat the three what you have left now is a population of seven now each of these bears or peanuts in my case are going to reproduce one baby at a time so this is where it needs to be random you guys are going to grab seven babies you're going to stick them back in the population now how many do I now have I have 14 Okay, so here's the deal. I need for you guys to understand this. We start off with 10. We're going to eat three happy bears. But if there's no happy bears left, we'll eat one sad bear. That's okay. Um, but we really don't want to. Okay, but you have to eat at least three bears for that one population. That population then is going to reproduce. Each has their own baby. So I have seven left, which means that seven plus seven is a population of 14. Okay, so now I'm going to take my 14. You guys are going to dump them out on your desk or table, wherever you guys have at home, and you're going to count how many happy, how many sad bears do I have in my population. So you guys are analyzing the genetics of the population. Okay. Now, put all the bears back in your cup, which is 14, and of course, what are we eating? That's right. You guys are eating happy bears. Okay. So you're going to reach in, and you're going to grab how many? Three. All right. So I'm going to grab three happy bears, but if I don't have any happy left, 
grab one or two of the sad bears, but it needs to be a total of, that's right, three, okay? So here's my three dead bears. They go back into my bucket, and how many do I have left? Well, 11 minus three is what? Exactly. So here's, or sorry, 14, 14 minus three. 14 minus three equals 11, okay? So I have 11 left. These 11 now reproduce, and therefore 11 plus 11 is 22, okay? So here's my 11 that I reproduce. I now have a new population of 22. So reach into your bucket, which is your original supplies, and you're gonna add 11 more into our population, okay, just random. Now that you guys have a population of 22, you guys are gonna go through, dump this out, analyze all your happy and sad on your data table. And again, here's your data table here. You guys will be analyzing both numbers and percentages. And the percentage is what's important, okay? Now, how many are we gonna reach in and grab as a predator? I'm gonna grab three happy bears, okay? So again, if I have no happy, then I'm gonna have to grab three sad bears. I don't really want to, but I'm gonna have to grab them, okay? So, but regardless, grab three bears and we're gonna chuck them out. Three minus 22, okay, is what I get left. And then therefore that new population reproduces and I end up having a new population, which again, I'm gonna reproduce. And now I've got a total population of 36, sorry, 38, <laughs> okay? So this fourth generation, so we started off with 10, we reproduced, now we had a population of 14, which is generation two, we ate three, reproduced. Generation three, we have a population of 22. We ate three, reproduced, and we end up with a population of 38, okay? Now, at this point, go ahead and count your data. How many happy and sad do I have? And then um, stop the lab, okay? At this point, I need for you guys to then calculate all the percentages from your happy and from your sad. So if you guys have, uh, let's say, five happy out of a party of 10, that would be 50%. You guys get it? Okay. Now, what we're looking for here, guys, is throughout the generations, okay? So generation one, generation two, generation three. Did the population of happy to sad shift? Did it change, okay? If it did, then evolution is actually happening before our eyes, right? Actually witnessing this change or adaptation. If throughout the changing generations, the population percentages stayed the same. So it started off as 50-50, and by generation four, it stayed 50-50, even though the predator was coming in and eating its food, then that means that there's no evolution, okay? And that's what we wanna figure out. Are these bears evolving? or are they not evolving, okay? So on the second page, I'm gonna be giving you guys an equation, all right? Now I have a whole lecture about just this equation. So before you do this lab, please make sure to watch my lecture first, okay? And then go ahead and finish the lab because you're gonna to have to do some mathematical calculations, um, some statistical analysis on whether or not generation one has statistically changed from generation four, okay? Now, once you figure out, are these bears evolving, then you can go through and start to answer the questions. I'm gonna give you guys a big hint here. Yes, the bears are evolving. So before your eyes, these peanuts, because I was attacking them, are actually going to start to evolve within four generations. So it's pretty, pretty stinging quick, okay? Now, the question is why, okay? How are they doing that? Um, and I want you guys to think outside the box. Now, with Hardy Weinberg, Hardy Weinberg was actually developed um, by two different people at the same time. So Hardy was one, Weinberg was the other. And they actually developed it within the same year of each other. And so what they stated was in order to have no evolution whatsoever, in order for these peanuts, to never evolve throughout the entire generations, generation one to generation 100 with predators, okay, these little guys 
cannot mutate. So they have to stay exactly like this forever and ever, okay? Uh, they cannot leave their original habitat. So if you guys notice, my peanuts didn't go anywhere. They're still here at my house, okay? We didn't actually travel anywhere, all right? Um, they have to have a large population. So I had a whole bag of peanuts here. That's a pretty big population, all right? So, you know, is that is that happening? Now keep in mind, if our population is not big enough, then suddenly you have bears that are mating with each other, and that is inbreeding. Inbreeding causes mutations, mutations cause change, and then change in turn will eventually, if it's beneficial, advantageous, it will get passed down to child to child and eventually start to change the species over time. Guys, that's evolution, okay? So instead of having a peanut, I now have a bread of peanut butter, okay? That's a totally different species because it's changed over time, okay? So in order to have that not happen, that not happen, we have to have a giant population, okay? Again, if it's a small population, inbreeding can occur, all right? Number four is random mutation, or sorry, random mating, okay? Now these babies, when I was grabbing them out of the bucket into my other population here, um, they, I just was randomly grabbing them. So here's some babies, here it is in the new population. So that means that they were just randomly mating with whoever which means women, you cannot choose a mate, okay? Um, so no sexual selection is in this case. It's just, you'll do today, you'll do tomorrow, okay? Um, it's random. And so that allows for the genetics in the population to actually stay the same, all right? Um, number five, and again, these are the five principles of the Hardy Weinberg, um, is no natural selection. So natural selection means that the environment did not change. So it's still windy, still cold, still at my house. Um, we haven't gone anywhere, it hasn't changed. Um, so please keep in mind um, the five factors of Hardy Weinberg is number one, no mutation. So we cannot change. Number two, no migration. So I can't leave my house, okay? Number three is a large population. Number four is random mating. And number five is natural selection. So if during this lab, if these generations decide to shift, the percentages change, then one of those factors has been broken. If just one is broken in the Hardy Weinberg, you will drive evolution, as in evolution will happen within that species, okay? So hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, stay tuned for more awesome Holen Chambers Biology Labs. And remember, before you actually do this lab, you're gonna need to watch, number one, my lecture on Hardy Weinberg, and number two, please keep in mind, if you don't have um, Teddy Grahams, use whatever you got, okay? So designate half your cookies as being happy, half your cookies as being sad. Maybe use M&Ms, so the red are happy, the blue are sad. Um, just have a bunch of them, okay? Um, so enough to actually make a final population of 38. So if you guys can get 40 gummy bears, 40 M&Ms, 40 peanuts, um, that's really all you guys need, all right? So please email me on School Loop or DM me on Instagram. Again, Holland Chambers Biology if you guys have any questions. Um, otherwise, good luck, have fun, um, and again, make sure to submit your final data, the um, questions um, and answers on um, uh, Google Classroom. All right, guys, stay safe.